our side our point of view it should not make any difference to our activities right we were getting a lot of knowledge capital yeah. from reserve bank of india right. and they do hope we will continue to get that other than that for my regular activities i don't think it's a policy decision they have done it for nabard earlier so it is in the same lines they have done done for couple of other institutions so they have taken it okay that's about it so the hfcs used to uh, borrow at a much higher rate than uh, the scheduled banks right and uh, with the 25000 crore affordable housing fund uh, will it, whom will it impact the most see we are still working out the contours of that fund right all that i'm saying is it would cover both hfcs as well as banks right on their refinance for example one of the things which is very clearly mentioned there is the shortfall of psl right. which is equivalent to the our rural housing fund and urban housing fund which we are administering as of now right and we are disbursed for about 21 lakh houses in both the funds put together yes. so that will definitely continue yes the advantage of that is that is at a low cost lending plus it has a onward lending cap so the affordable houses the masses will get lending at a reasonably priced um, interest rates right. part of it we are still working out the contours and as and when it evolves we will let you know right uh, so uh, the affordable housing uh, that has got the infrastructure status is for 30 and 60 square meters right uh, and that gets a 8% gst the rest of the affordable housing is the gst higher see it's a policy decision right. unfortunately in this country whatever the rate the government fixes somebody wants a lower rate right <clears throat> when we say gst to the best of my understanding any construction activity also get a lot of input credit right. we will have to see the net effect of that right how do the builders pass on this net effect to the customer net effect should not be that high right uh so in uh, 30 and 60 square meters when we do the math it's almost net zero because once the input credit also comes the developer passes it on to the consumer it's almost net zero for the rest of them it is about uh, see the whole idea is it is a revenue loss to the government absolutely <clears throat> where does government should support government should support at the high end a person who is buying 1 crore houses or a person who should buy lg and yeah. ews and lg yeah. so they have taken a call let's do ews and lg right. and then take a relook at it later it is always a policy decision it is always a question between revenue loss versus what is that it gives right right they cannot extend it everywhere right <clears throat> right uh, so the ex, uh, all the all the budgetary uh, announcements that have been made uh, do you think we uh, how close are we to the 2022 target and is it finance that is a problem um number one so far if you see the how who are website out of their 1 crore target yeah right they have said 37 lakh houses they have sanctioned and i think 20 or 21 lakhs of fair right is coming up other than that about 80000 88 houses have been funded by us alone on cls right. now what is happening is what it does not cover is the private sector right we have worked on a portal we are working with credai and naritco saying can they start giving in the data at least on affordable housing into a portal mm-hmm. so all of us have and in fact you also right. worked earlier all of us have a single portal for one reason or other it is taking time now once that happen i'm sure this 37 lakhs will show at least you know 47 lakhs or 50 lakhs to take a rough guess right. i'm just assuming a million would have come across the country in private sector right. Right. with all this incentives which have been added up right. let's see at that point in time to housing as a rule takes time to come up see i remember the same question one year ago nothing is happening nothing is happening how it will achieve today 37 lakhs have been sanctioned so right. which means state governments are well on its way to bring this up mm-hmm. so housing it needs some inflection point it needs some time because land and permission take time once that comes in it would i definitely see it as an achievable target my second point is let's say we stop at the 85th percentile or 90th percentile in 2022 what is wrong 
I am only saying instead of one crore, 90 lakh people got their houses, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic thing. Yeah, yeah. So the NPAs that are coming with the banks, and we, uh, today we have an auction platform with Magic Bricks, and we find that most many banks have, are coming forward to use the uh, auction platform to sell off their residential assets. These assets come from the retail lending, or is it the developer? Is I it do not. Market? I haven't seen that. I have to get the data to see it to give yeah. you a concrete answer. But so far, as I see, the retail has not shown any great change in their NPA run rates. Mm -hmm. It is so far. It is largely from the industry. I would no comment on it. I would only comment on the HFC data, uh, say the home loan data which I see. Right. So where it's coming from is left to you because I haven't seen that, so I cannot comment on that. Right. Um, so uh, when we talk about the next, uh, we are coming to the end of this financial year. In the next, say six eight months, um, is the affordable housing uh, uh, building uh, or lending going into the smaller towns, the smaller cities? I think it's already going into the smaller towns because one of the challenges which <laughs> many of the housing finance companies and banks say is how to sort of fund the low-cost builder at a smaller towns, right, right? right? So to that extent, they are looking at it. So which means the builders have gone into smaller towns. With the development of infrastructure, be it buses, be it metros, be it trains running, um, the commute has become a little more easy. So which means the peripheral areas of the city is getting momentum, which is ideal places to put in 300 and 600 square feet houses. Right. Right, and of cities like Bombay, people are used to relatively a yeah, longer time of commute to get these things done. Three, if you also look at this budget, the biggest thing is the skill development. With all this investment on skill development coming in, it is going to supply hordes of skilled laborers and masons and carpenters and electricians into the vicinity. And once that comes in, the affordable housing builders are going to use this labor because A, they will know the local things, B, they would be much easier to use than importing labor from elsewhere okay. and three, because you are using local labor and skilled labor at that, it will create the economy of that area to go up and the cash keeps circulating. Okay. So it has wider implications and wider benefits than just seeing it as a skill development. I see it as a great benefit for the affordable houses coupled with infrastructure spending, mm. coupled with smart smart cities, about 2.4 lakhs mm. crores, which has been allocated, and skill development centers, I see all this giving a boost to affordable houses in a big way, both in tier two as well as tier three and four cities. So what about rental housing at the lower levels? Do you think that is a missing See, link? this is working in progress. Definitely, it's a much, much needed thing. If you see things abroad, Everybody starts with the rental housing and slowly move towards it. But today also, it also has to be matched with, can you get back that house? Is your judicial process or the reposition process of that house easy? And the answer definitely is we cannot say that it's that easy. So I, the last I know, the Ministry of Housing is working on some rationalization on the entire rental policy. Let's hope that comes out soon for this to be taken. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you.